Hey everyone, happy Friday. It's Adam here in the Airworks Workshop and today we're going to be doing a little inventory after our finishing kit just showed up. But before we do that, I want to give you a little tour of the shop, show you what we've been working on, where we're going, where we're heading next week. And then we're going to uh, go ahead and roll right into the full unboxing of a super duty finishing kit. Now, if you don't want to sit through the whole thing because it is in real time, I will put some links down below where you can jump ahead to just certain components if you want to do that. But let's go ahead and get started and uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at uh, where we're at and where we're headed next week. All right, well, first off, let's take a look back in the back here in the rear jump seat area at the armrest. Now, this is an area that requires a lot of really studying the manuals, the photos, because there were some gaps. I have since worked with Nick at Zenith on getting better instructions in the uh, illustrated parts list. Uh, but to get this all together in the right sequence, you've got that mixing bar back there. You've got the armrest sides. You've got the control linkages that go up and down. And you've got side covers that are supposed to go on. And in previous pictures and previous videos that other people have done, they actually show those side covers going under um, those components where these holes are. So they actually show the flange for the side cover going under there. I talked to Nick at Zenith. He said, go ahead and just put them on over the top. That's how they were kind of designed. And uh, so you'll be fine doing that. But one of the things I did is the manual said to use A5 flush rivets, which they didn't provide um, for the rivets that are around the frame there. You can kind of see the gold circles there. I went ahead and used my own flush A and rivets, did a uh, countersunk hole and put flush rivets there. Now you may say, well, why did you do flush rivets when you've got regular pop rivets everywhere else on there? Well, I'm not concerned about it. This isn't an aerodynamic place. And another thing that I'm going to be doing before I put these side covers on is I'll actually be putting like a weather stripping tape, a small thin foam seal around that edge right there. That'll keep the rattling down, it'll keep any excess wind or anything from uh, leaking through there and it should make a nice tight seal. So I'm not too concerned with um, the little small pop rivets sticking up around the nut plates when I have the flush rivets. I just wanted a quick solution and I didn't want to use big A4 rivets in that spot right there. Another area I've been working on or waiting on, I should say, is this front brake area. Everything's just kind of loosely fit right now. But I finally got the Matco brake cylinders in and uh, those showed up in the finishing kit. And that's going to allow me to really line up the, uh, the, the brake pedals that we had to manufacture. Now, if there's any confusion or you're not sure how to do this, there is a, a current updated drawing on this on these uh, looks like door hinges here. But you basically have to pound these into shape or put them in a vise and bend those to get that shape because that actually rivets to the back side of your rudder pedal and uh, that's what uh, actuates the, the brakes. Um, I'm going to put some video up here just showing you kind of how I put it in a vise and slowly bent it. They do now have a assembly guide showing that process. But uh, once they get bent, then you're going to get positioned left and right. And then once I put the brake cylinder down in that lower mount, I'll be able to line up that flange that I, my thumb is on and actually uh, get the, the rod in line so that it's not on any kind of an angle or anything. And of course, everything else here is just temporary set in place. We got the bushing there, bolts, those have to all be tightened down, but we want to do that after we do painting in this uh, Ford cabin area. Another uh, finishing component here is this lower support bracket. This is for the front landing gear. There'll be a, a nylon bushing that rests on there. That's something that has to get drilled out and then uh, hardware uh, attached on there. I've got a few things on the to-do list here. Rudder pedals, which we just looked at. The jump seat armrest, that's, that's of course getting wrapped up. That lower support nose gear is, is uh, something we're working on. But one of the things that's going to take a little while is this lower main gear channel. There's a lot of stuff going on in this area right here. A lot of AN hardware, a lot of weird angles to get to. And you're kind of working upside down or from the bottom. We've got all these holes back here that have to be drilled out for hardware. We've got riveting on the, along the bottom skin there to join the front and rear fuselages. And then, you know, hardware on both sides, inside, around the side. We've got the brackets that go on the outside. So that's an area where there's a lot going on and it's going to be difficult to get to. So my plan is to actually take the fuselage off the table, 
rotate it 90 degrees so that we create a bridge from this table here all the way over to the finishing kit crate. I'll probably put it in the center of the shop there, but that'll allow me to kind of create a bridge and get under the bottom and work from the bottom side to drill those holes out, get the hardware in, all so that we can get to that point where we can get that main gear installed and get it on its wheels and tires once it's back from powder coat. One other item that we're wrapping up, of course, is the firewall. We did a whole video on that, uh, but one of the components that is not included in the regular kit and it only comes in the finishing kit is this upper support bracket for the Ford uh, landing gear. So we'll get this all drilled out, get the decals removed, get it primed and painted, and then uh, we'll paint the firewall. We'll reinstall this component, put the hardware in so it's nice and clean, and then our firewall will be complete and ready to reinstall in the aircraft. Over here in the shop, we've got uh, that main Tundra gear, and man, is this a chunk of aluminum. It's amazing that an airplane can even lift something this heavy, but I think that just goes to show how sturdy and how much lift capability the Super Duty really does have. So we've got the nose strut there, the main gear, and the tail skid. These are the first components that I'm sending out for powder coat uh, so we can get those wrapped up and then get this thing sitting on the gear uh, in the shop here, which will allow us to clear up the bench for the wing assembly. You can see here we've got the Aero Classics Tundra tires, the nose gear. Uh, we've got our seat frames, our nose fork, uh, some other components there. We've got our wheels and brakes. So it's nice to finally see all these components coming together, getting them sorted out. Uh, we did opt for the map pocket option, which gives you basically a little kit to build there. That's kind of nice. And then we also have the center console option, which is uh, something that allows us to put our fuel uh, selector, additional switches and gauges and things like that in there. So guys, hope you've enjoyed the little tour of the shop. Let's go ahead and jump right into the unboxing of the Super Duty Finish Kit. All right, guys, well, we got the screws out of the crate. The crate consisted of one four by eight sheet of plywood with another two foot-ish section here. Let's go ahead and see what we got. Looks like we got bubble wrap. Looks like this is the panel. Yep, there's my cruiser panel. Decided to go with the cruiser panel, so I have a little bit wider uh, spot for some better real estate switch that out that requires you switch out not only the panel but the uh, top forward skin so i had to order a top forward skin as well okay i'm seeing doors in here let's go ahead and take off this back sheet Definitely nice to have uh, a shop big enough to accommodate all this. I know people build in the single car garage and such, but man, I do not envy you. I, can, I feel like I can barely fit this in here sometimes. All right, looks like we got lots of bubble wrap. Uh, speaking of bubble wrap, we have a uh, bubble canopy that goes up on the top up here. Well, it's the bubble wrap we got here. This is well, this is our top sunroof here. That of course goes up here.
Anybody need some bubble wrap? I got plenty of it here. Company that sells all this bubble wrap and packing material, U Line, they're about uh, two miles away from me, their headquarters. Like we have a door panel. Pretty cool. So I'm gonna look on here. Of course, the, oh, I had it on backwards, but uh, of course, these will be all custom trim to fit down the road. Not near that section right now by any means. Another door. This is actually this side's door right here. So it'll be like that. Those bad boys. Pow. Put some aluminum angle in here. Put that on my shelf. Steel parts, aluminum parts, hardware, and landing lights. Zenith high wing kit box one of three. I don't know what's in all those because I don't have all these parts memorized. Looks like we got some seat frames. I'm gonna get these out to powder coat ASAP. So those will be in here like this. Pretty cool. Okay, we got wing struts in here. Hopefully that crunchy uh, paper sound isn't too bad on the microphone. We got a made in the USA Airhawk 8.0, the front. Wing struts. Looks like I'm making another cardboard, cardboard paper recycling run. Okay, we've got some side windows in here. Oh, they're even drilled. That's nice. Drilled out already. Wow. Rear Lexan windows. Well, that's cool. Be interested to see how these fit up. We've got our nice big front windscreen. We're gonna carefully set that over here. And we've got another tire in here. Those are nice. We'll see how these work out, but we may be putting some Alaska bush wheels on there. We'll just have to see. Well, I'm assuming these are probably the wheels then. Right, high wing kit. We got some struts. We'll set this down here. Seat 
pans. And of course we have skins under the bottom cardboard. Don't forget that guys, because it's real easy to overlook. The bottom of your crate just looks like some padding they put in there, but that's where all the, a lot of the flat skins are stored. Be surprised how much of this crating material comes in handy for other things down the road. And by all means, you paid for it, so you might as well use it, right? Okay, we got a, ooh, that's a heavy one. And look at this bad boy here, whoo wee. That is not light either. In fact, I'm gonna take that other brace off there because I won't be able to get it out. Whew. That is not a light piece of aluminum there. That is a stout, stout piece of aluminum. Let me tell you. So, we'll figure out, uh, figure out this, get it uh, probably drilled up and off to powder coat as well. And our last box in here, well, we'll take out the struts, put those under with the spars I'm working on still. There's our aerodynamic wing struts, put those back here. Got the rear struts. Okay, nothing under there. Looks like the only skin under there is my uh, new Ford skin, since I have the uh, cruiser panel now. There's that guy. All right, from what I can tell, we got everything else out under here. So, that is it, guys, for the unboxing of the Zenith CH750 Super Duty finishing kit. We're gonna just double check here, because you never know before I fill this thing back up with packing material. Packing material, back in the box.